need to believe the fellowship. This is the first time we do have welcome cards in the seat back in front of you. We would ask that you fill this out uh, with your name, address, phone number, so that or email address, so that we can get in contact with you and just follow up on your first time visit. And I want to just be the first to welcome you to Believers Fellowship, and we have a special way of greeting you, and that's for you to stay seated. Members, regular attenders, let's get from where you are. Greet those that are new. Amen and amen. How about we, we return to our seats and you may be seated. If you can return to your seats, you may be seated. I have one correction in the bulletin. If you could look at your bulletin, it's on the front side of it. It says family night. Uh, it should read tonight is family night. So there is no evening services tonight. It is there's family night. So there will not be any. Sir. No, no, no. That's what you want me to do. I won't do it, brother. <laughs> At this time, we will be showing a video for our ladies' Bible study. After God's own heart, in all its frailty, in all its weakness, in all its failure, gives us hope to know that we could have a heart like our own God. David is telling us, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit himself, is that no matter how hotly his enemy pursued him, the love and the goodness of God ran faster. Bring him the whole splattered mess. He will build up a woman after his own heart. Amen. Ladies, you do not want to miss that. For here at the Spring Campus, I think it starts September 4th at 10 a.m., so you do not want to miss that opportunity to, to be in that uh, Bible study. Uh, also, if you could silence your phones, that would be greatly appreciated. Let's stand and, and pray as we get ready to continue to honor the Lord. Let's stand. September 3rd, there you go. Father God, we just, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Fathers, as we get ready to take the Lord's Supper, Father, for, Father, start, start searching us, Father, where we may have offended or been offended, Father, so that we can bring those, those grievances and, and, and to the altar, Father. If there's a way that we have offended you, Father, make it known to us, Father, so that we can come and repent, Father. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to continue to praise you, Father, for all that you've done. We thank you for your son, Father, who died on the cross for our sins, Father. Father, I thank you for today that, that we live in a country where we can still come to church, Father, and, and, and learn about you and share your, your name, Father, with those that don't, Father. Father, we thank you for that opportunity. I ask that you continue to, to bless our country, bless our community, bless our church, and bless the people, Father. We ask all this in your precious name. Amen. stronger 
Amen and amen. Good morning. That's the place we all need to come to, is to the cross, amen. It's a good place to stay once you get there, by the way. Hallelujah. It's good to see you today. You joined us on a day we'll be sharing communion together, and it's always an exciting time when we take the time in our services to celebrate communion and remember the cross that we've been singing about today and come back to that place in our own hearts and lives to remember what the Lord has done. Remember what he said. As often as you do this, uh, come on, you had a cheat sheet. <laughs> as often as you do this, one more time, as often as you do this, and that's exactly what we want you to do is to remember the Lord and all that he's done for you and how that he has uh, not only saved us from hell, which is in the future tense for, for those who do not know Christ, in the present tense for those who have gone through life and tasted death. We don't have to deal with that if we're children of God. But also, think about how much more he's delivered us, even in the present day and even in the present life of, of the grace of God and meeting every need and taking care, of, taking care of our lives on every level. That's because of the cross of Jesus Christ. So when you think about the blessings of God, when you think about the sufficiency of Christ in your life, you remember all that he's done for you. It comes back to this place, what Christ did in giving up his life for you. Let me say this at the beginning of this time that we're celebrating here. I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the Lord and the, the, those last days of his ministry and life, and more specifically about the Lord's table, communion time, as Paul wrote to the Corinthians. But this is a time where we sh should be receiving this together in fellowship and in faith, in, with hearts that are right towards the Lord, towards each other in our lives. But also, it, it comes to a time of just real significance to, to see that as a, as a body, we're doing this. As, as a church family, we do this. Now, if you're not a member of Believer's Fellowship, we invite you to receive the Lord's Supper with us today. We don't celebrate as some churches do. When they celebrate communion, they call it closed communion. In other words, if you're not a member who's covenant relationship with the church or joined the church by membership or been baptized in that church, many times the doors will be shut to you in, in those kind of services in, in, in churches. But I believe that it's for the whole of, the, of those who love Jesus Christ. And so as we receive the Lord's Supper together today, let's remember that it's the, the essential issue is our relationship to him, not which church you might belong to or not belong to. It's about Jesus Christ and his body. And have you received him as your personal Lord and Savior? And are you living for him, walking in his grace and glory? Amen. So uh, you know, when, when we serve this to you, feel free to participate based upon what the scriptures tell us. Let's do look at what the Apostle Paul shares. And, you know, the, it's interesting as Paul starts out in this passage of scripture, and you can stand with me as we read it together. He's talking about how God's given him the destruction the Lord Jesus has, all right? For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night which, when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also he took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, therefore, eats the bread, drinks the cup of the Lord, in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a person examine himself. Then... And so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So I'm not here to examine you. You're not here to qualify me to take the Lord's Supper. Saw an interesting little deal pop up on a text the other day that says, you know, when you stand before God, he's not going to ask you about my sin. <laughs> let's, ex let's examine ourselves before the Lord. Amen. And he goes on to say, but when we are judged, excuse me, where are we at? Verse 29, i got to get the right place here in a minute. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks the judgment on himself. This is why many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, judged by the Lord, we're disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. And so, my brothers, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. Let's say amen to the reading of the word. Amen. You may be seated. There's only about three important things I want to draw out. There's 
there are so many things that we could say about, about the Lord's Supper and what it means as we, we share in communion together. But these are, I think, three significant things that I just want to share with you this morning. And I know I, I've gone back over, even in my own notes, and looked at all the different sermons that I had preached concerning the Lord's Supper and the different things. I mean, we've talked about the elements. We've talked about, we've talked about the, the, the Passover and what, how that related to communion and how the Lord took those elements from the Passover. We've talked about the cups that were involved. There's just so many. We've talked about the cross. But let me just kind of do a, a quick thing with us this morning and talk about this in, in regard to, I think, a significant fact. One is this is a table of commemoration. We are looking to the past. I mean, you can't remember Jesus without remembering what he's done for us. So we look back a couple thousand years, and we look to the cross, and we remember what he did for us there. And I really think it's important that we, we really take this as a, as, as a very uh, important mental exercise, in other words, that we really do go back mentally. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in our minds in a sermon and lots of things that go on around us and lots of activities that we're dealing with today and things that issues or problems and struggles and trials or even blessings that have a tendency to capture our thoughts. But let's just drift back in time a little bit this morning and let's go back to that upper room for a moment and let's see the Lord Jesus with his disciples and realize that we're remembering him there doing this, but really even what's getting ready to happen next because he's getting ready to present himself is an offering for our sin. He's getting ready to make himself a sacrifice for my sin. And without that sacrifice and without that offering of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, you and I would not be able to be saved. No matter how many sacrifices, no matter if we have Jewish descent and, and go to the temple and bring sacrifices, the, the writer of Hebrews says that for it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away our sins. It's, it's just not going not to happen. There's no amount of sacrifices, no, no amount of time it, 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 we had to have somebody take our place and to die for us in our sin. That's just the way it worked. You say, why? Because we're all sinners. Now, remember the sacrifices that had to be brought. Those were all just foreshadows of the one true lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, who would come. Remember something about those sacrifices, as we've talked about in the past. They always had to be without stain, without blemish. You know, in other words, representing sinlessness. The problem with you and I, if we went to present ourselves to pay for our own sins, uh, it's not acceptable. We're not sinless. In fact, that's why we need an offering. So if someone has to take my place. Somebody without sin has to take my place. Let me just give you a little simple illustration. Let's say uh, this week I decided I need more money. And I get to thinking to myself, there's a lot of money down at the bank. So what I'm going to go do I'm going to slip out of here, tell them in the office, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to get my gun, and I'm going to go rob the bank because they got lots of money, and I just happen to need some money. So I walk in the bank, hold my gun out to the little lady behind the teller stand and say, listen, empty the drawers. They walk down the line, they empty all the drawers, and they put... Fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars I get in cash. I come back to the office, you know, put it in my shelf, put it in my briefcase, and hey, I got the money I needed now. Now the problem is, you just can't walk in and rob a bank without some uh, retributions for that. <laughs> it's, you're not supposed to rob banks, by the way, if you didn't know that. There are laws against it. All right, there are penalties that you're going to have to pay. And so let's say, you know, they catch me, they take me to the court, you know, and uh, the judge says, you know, uh, uh, they, the, the attorneys tell us that this is the state of Texas or whatever county against Joe Arms who's robbed such and such bank of $70,000 or whatever the amount is, and, and the trial takes place. Well, there's not really much I can do. They have cameras these days down at the bank. I didn't cover myself or anything like that or put on a disguise. I, I robbed the bank. They, the cameras play back the video inside the courtroom, and there I am pointing a gun, telling me to give me your money. I'm taking the money, putting it in a bag. And the camera, as I'm exiting, takes another picture of me as I walk out the bank. A parking lot camera sees me get in my car. There's the license plate. You know, it's all obvious. I robbed the bank. I'm guilty. So I stand before the judge and say, I am so sorry. Your Honor, I, I just, it's not like me to rob banks. I gave all the money back the day y'all caught me. And I, that was really stupid, all right? I'm, I, and I really am sorry. I may even cry. <laughs> I just don't know what was the matter with me. I robbed a bank. 
And I go into that, and just please forgive me. I don't, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to prison. I'm sorry, you know, that we're not going to let you go. There is a standard of justice that must be upheld, you know, and they sentenced me to seven, ten years, whatever it might be, and they put me in handcuffs and court me out of the courtroom and head for the jailhouse. Well, that's just not fair. Banks have a lot of money. They're not going to miss. I mean, Capital One's got billions of dollars, right? They're not going to miss a little tawdry something thousands of dollars. I'm guilty. There's laws in the land. And if the judge were to say, oh, yeah, you're a pretty good guy. I know you passed her down there. You know, that's how we caught you. The girl that behind the counter visited your church before. She knew exactly who you were. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, no problem. You're dismissed. You can get out of here. You know that's not going to happen. But let me tell you this. God is more just than any human judge. Now, the human judge is saying, if I let you go for what you did, then I'm going to have to let everybody else go. You're just going to set a precedent, and it's a precedent that we're just not going to hold up to. You're guilty. You're going to jail. You're going to pay the time for the crime. All right? And there's not going to be any getting out of it. Here's the beauty of my salvation. I'm guilty before God, and so are you. We're all guilty. But because of what Jesus did... And what he expressed he was doing in this commemorative meal we're going to take together. Because of his sacrifice on our behalf, we get to go free from hell, from judgment for our sins. Now, there are things that in your life, that because when you sin and you do stupid stuff and you have these, there may be some repercussions you're going to face. But I want you to know as far as God's concerned, he's going to forgive you and that's not going to be held to your account when you stand before him. You're going to be saved and set free. The Bible says that Christ Jesus suffered for our sins. He suffered for our sins on the cross, and he suffered once for all, the Scripture says in 1 Peter 3. The Bible says he was sinless, that he knew no sin, but he died for sinners. He died that you and I might be saved and not have to face the penalty for our sinfulness. Now, we're all, we're all guilty. I mean, I mean, you may not have robbed any banks, but we're all guilty. And you, 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 know, you, you can kind of take your predicament and your situation and kind of come up with your own equation you know, and say, well, you know, here's what I'll do. Judge, I, I tell you what, I know I robbed the bank, but I, I, you know what? I'm not going to ever rob another bank. So can I go? That ain't going to happen. We cannot, and we start making excuses, you know, why, why I shouldn't have to pay, or why, you know, I, I, here's what I'll do. It, when it comes to hell and to God and all that, I really don't want to give my life to Christ and live a life following Jesus as a disciple. So how about I just come to church? How about I just do some religious stuff, you know, and I'll do my religious thing, and I'll go to, I'll be a good guy. And so certainly when I stand before the judge of all judges, he's going to say, oh, arms, you were such a good guy. You get, you don't, Jesus, you don't need the blood of Jesus. It's not going to happen like that. Because we are stained deeply with sin, and only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash us clean. Only he can make us righteous. So when we take the Lord's Supper, let's please remember, there was no way we were going to get into heaven. There's no way we we're going to have eternal life without Jesus Christ. It had to be done. There's no hope for us. There's no other way. There's not a Bible verse in the entire Word of God that says, you know, if you'll be a good guy, you won't go to hell. <laughs> Just be a good husband. Be a good, be a good kid. You good kid. I'm a good kid. That's good. All good kids get to go to heaven. Like all dogs die and go to heaven. I don't know. We just come up with that. Well, I really don't believe that, really. Have you given your life to Christ? Have you been thinking all the time? You know, when it all comes to the end, I have to stand before God. He's going to just pull out the scale of justice, and he's going to put my good things on one side and my bad stuff on the other. And everybody knows I've been a lot gooder than I've been badder. Excuse the language. Everybody knows I've been a lot better than I've been bad. Really? Not everybody's with you all the time to start with, but God is. <laughs> he knows our hearts. He knows our selfishness. And we have, this, we have this, this sin sickness in our life that only Jesus can cure and only he can heal and only he can help us with. But if we don't come to Christ, we'll get what we deserve. Well, I'm a good person. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That deserves hell. 
and God loved you enough, and God had mercy on you, and God cared enough that he, he so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. See, God's, God's mercy reached out and satisfied God's justice. No one loved me like God. No one loves me like Jesus. The gospel. Someone said the acrostic for gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L, is God's only son provided eternal life. Isn't that good? God's only son provided eternal life. So when we come and we celebrate, this is what we do. We look to the past and we remember what God has done for us and what Christ has done for us and realize it is something we could not, any one of us, do for ourselves. Somebody say, say amen to the grace of God. Hallelujah for the grace of God. But not only is it commemoration as we remember the past. It's not clicking for me. So you want to click the next one for me? It's also, this is the table that represents the present, communion. In fact, we call it communion service. But it, and, and communion service is a time. But it, it speaks at this point in time to the present. What's the Lord doing right here in our lives today? I think we need to remember not only what the Lord's done for me, okay, in the past, but what's the Lord doing in our lives, in our, in our lives right now? What, what are we doing with the Lord in our life right now? What, what's happening? This does speak of the present. That Jesus Christ, is, 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 as I celebrate this time, he's actively working in my life alone. That I have been saved, past tense, by grace, through faith, in Christ Jesus. But at the same time, this salvation is not just a, a one-time deal. God is working in my life today. God's moving in my life and in my heart now. I have this fellowship and I have this relationship with the Lord. He's living in me. The Bible tells us that salvation is Christ living in us, through us, all right? So there's not just, I came to Jesus, I came to the cross, I gave my heart to him. But the Bible, well, Jesus used these words. If any man will come after me, let him come. You catch that? Come after me. We talked last week about marriage, and marriage involves pursuit, right? It's, it's, it's embracing. It's, it's leaving mother or father, moving towards a new relationship. It has to do with, with, with pursuit and, with, and, 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 and holding on to. But we hold on to by pursuing. This relationship of Jesus Christ and me, there's a pursuit involved. We are called disciples. It means that we're following. We're listening. We're adhering to. We're doing. We're responding. But you know as well as I, there's a lot of people who say, this event happened in my life back here in the past, but where is the present? What's God doing in your life now? Where, where, where's the relationship? Where's the fellowship? Where's the growing and the maturing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ? Where's the, the union that takes place on a daily basis? I think when Paul's talking, he says, he said, listen, you judge yourself and realize that as you receive this, you know, that, that you need to be discerning. Discerning about yourself, discerning about the body of Christ, discerning about what's going on around you. Where am I in my walk with the Lord? Where am I in my walk with you, with each other? Are we right with each other? Are our hearts pure towards each other? Are they clean? Paul said, listen, you need to be discerning. This is the present he's talking about. The body of Christ, your relationships, your life. And, and you think about, I have fellowship with him. John put it this way. He said, this is the message that we give to you then in 1 John. That, that, that we have this new life. It's a life in Christ. It's fellowship with you and with me, with God. In other words, there's this, this communion of, of, of union that takes place. That We're enjoying the relationship. But so many people, you know, that, that element of the body of Christ is not really part of their spiritual life. I mean, there's lots of people who just have given up going to church, right? They, they just don't go to church anymore. The church in America is, is in the decline all across the nation, all right? Every church in America is being affected. Even the megachurches are being affected by this, this exodus from the church today. Most recent polls say that on average, 8,000 to 10,000 churches close every year in America. 8 to 10,000 churches in America are shutting their doors. They have no context in their, their, their spiritual life, if they have one, about the body of Christ, using their gifts, discovering their gifts, being involved in ministry in the body of Christ and to the world around them. So I think it's important that we come to this, where am I relationship with the Lord? Where am I relationship with you? Am I right with the Lord? Am I right with you? He said the third element, if you want to hit that for me, 
is the table of commitment. This talks not only are we talking about a, a table of commemoration, a table of communion, but a table of commitment. One is past, one is present. It also deals with the future because what does he say? It, it speaks, he says, of a new covenant. The new covenant basically involves me having an eternal life with the Lord in heaven, right? The Bible talks about even Jesus as he did this. He said, listen, is that, he says, receive this. As often as you do this, do this in, in, in remembrance of me. And he says, by the way, I'm not going to repeat this with you physically until I come and get you. So it not only talks about what he's done, for, it talks about what he's done in the past, the present, but it talks about what's happening in the future. We're going to do this with the Lord Jesus. Now think about that for just a half a second. <laughs> That's not a pipe dream. That's not theological lore. All right? The Lord Jesus is actually going to sit down with all the redeemed one day, and we're going to have communion together. <laughs> now, if you weren't such an elegant crowd, I'd jump up and down and scream a little bit. But I'm doing that in my heart. Christ is returning and he's receiving his church into himself and we're going to have the wedding feast of the Lamb and we're going to share in a, a memorial celebration of all he's done that made that possible when we gather together. What a glorious day. That's the promise of the Lord's Supper, isn't it? That's what, that's what he says himself. He said, you know, I'm going to do this with you the next time I do it in person and we're going to do this together as we celebrate the new communion, the new covenant, the new relationship that we have. Listen, I know that's a, a lost theology today in the church. Very few churches talk about the, the, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ anymore. Some, I, for whatever reason, maybe it's not popular, we like to talk about ourselves and our needs and our wants more than we want to talk about the Lord in churches today, unfortunately. The focus has not gone on discipleship and living sacrificial lives. The focus has come on, oh, how can I be blessed? How can, I be, how can God bless me and honor me? I, 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 you know, I, I love worship music and stuff, but... I told Kathy on the way over here as we were listening, you know, to uh, worship music on the radio and driving over, I said, I said, it's kind of gotten a little, like, saccharine to me and sweet and low, you know, that kind of flavor, where some of our, it's, it's that, basically, I said, it seems like all the praise music today is about God's going to just, God just loves you, and you're the best, you know, and God's going to get you and chase you down and bless you and climb every mountain, part every sea. and I mean, so, I'm, I'm, maybe you, you, you kind of just the gist of a lot of the Christian music today. Now, that's great. That's, that's true. But that's only a little small facet on the beautiful diamond of God. And it's that one little small facet that says how God's blessing you. The greater, the greater message is not that. The greater message is we get to know God. Let's find out what we can about God. Let's look to him. Let's see his majesty. Let's, let's look at his holiness. Let's look at his, his dominion over all things. Let's look at his lordship. Well, we don't talk about lordship. We're too busy talking about loveship. <laughs> let's keep a balance, all right? The balance in the word of God even. The balance in theology needs to be there. It's not always about me, all right? It's about thee. And let's honor God. Let's see what God's got up and who God is and how God works and how he moves and how I can deepen my walk and relationship with him. Where now the focus isn't what I'm getting, it's who he is. And the more I do that, it's kind of like in our marriage conference we talked about the, the, the last weekend and, and renewed with, the more that we take time in our pursuit of each other, the more we fall in love with each other. Well, the more I pursue Jesus, the more I fall in love with him. But I'm too interested in him pursuing me. Is he going to follow along? get me out of whatever mess I get myself into, <laughs> you know. That's not the way it works, although he does, hallelujah. Let me read you a scripture before we receive the meal, this meal together. This is reference in, in, of the Lord and this gathering that we're going to experience. So as we move from that little upper room, let's sh shift mental gears. We went to the cross, and we're talking about the present, but let's, let's do look to the future for a moment. Imagine that moment as we stand around the throne of God and we're arrayed in white linen, you know, representing holiness before the Lord and we're free of every restraint, free of every bond of sin, free of every temptation, free of every element. You know, you're not going to say, well, I've got to sit down for this part of the worship service. You, you, nothing to make you want to sit down. There's no pain, all right? 
You're just, you're worshiping. You're, you're not worried about if somebody's looking at you while you got your hands raised. There's absolute freedom from your pride, you know, your selfishness or what somebody's wearing next to you or what somebody, that you don't have a good thing as they drove up. None of that's there. All right. Free before the Lord. The day when all the saints of God are going to celebrate the coming of the Lord and his glory and the marriage of the Lamb. And this is the Apostle John who's been taken to that moment like we're kind of mentally trying to push ourselves. And he says, then I heard again what sounded like a, a shout, a vast crowd, or the roar of a mighty ocean wave, or the crash of loud thunder. How many of you have ever been to a, a ball game in a professional stadium? And that, you know, the touchdown or the, the big catch or the, the big, and everybody goes, Wah! and everybody's just freaking out, right? And it's this roar that takes place. And, and that's, that's the fun of going to those kind of events and you kind of get caught up in that. And John says, that's what it was like. Everybody's just, whoa, this, this, and it's this vast eruption of, of power. What, he said, here's what it was. He said, I heard this roar of, of a vast crowd. And it was like the roar of a mighty ocean wave, a crash of a loud thunder. And what was it? Praise the Lord! You imagine millions of saints of God all bursting out in one moment. Praise the Lord! And he's there in their midst and they're worshiping him. And then here's what they say. For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us be glad, let us be rejoiced, and let us give honor to him. For the time has come for the wedding feast of the Lamb, and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear. For the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And then he added, these are the true words that come from God. Man, what a moment. John's sitting there and this burst of crowd noise breaks out. And there's this unison of praise. Jesus says to us, you do this in remembrance of me. So I, I, I don't want you to remember the past. I want you to remember the present relationship you have with the Lord. And if it's not right, move, shift gears, all right? Get it right. Move to the right place. Change has to come. Make the change. God enables that. But then realize there is a, there is a future day out here, you know? And it's not that far out in front of us. A reality is that will, you will discover. And you might think, I, I'm trying to believe that, Pastor. I, I just can't put all the pieces together. It just can't make sense, you know. And it's because you've been so polluted, you know, by E.T. and stuff like that. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what you're thinking of, but this is going to be an alien incursion for sure. <laughs> Jesus is coming. He's alien to the world. He's taking us home. We're aliens here. And we're going to celebrate in reality. So I think as, we, as you gentlemen come to serve the Lord's Supper with me, they want you to make your way to the front here. Let's bow our heads. And I'll also, if anybody wants to come make their way to the altar in this moment as well, as we prepare the table, then you come. With our heads bowed, our eyes and hearts open to the Lord, let's just let's stand together. And as these gentlemen are praying and this table's being prepared, I want to give you an opportunity, if you need to, just to make your way to the altar this morning. And just come and, and, and just between you and the Lord Jesus, just take, take care of business with him. Respond to the Holy Spirit this morning. That if your heart isn't right, you hadn't been, as we say, discerning the body of the Lord, you'd take just a moment between you and heaven. Just get it right with the Lord today. Find your place before the, before the Lord. Find your place in his presence today. And say, Lord, here's my heart. I want to be right and clean and holy before you. That if you did come today, that I'm right with you. I'm in tune with you. My heart is right with you. Lord Jesus, move in us and in this moment in power. Just a moment longer. Let's respond to the Holy Spirit as he speaks to us today. Lord, here's my heart. It's been dirty. Wash me. You see my rebelliousness. Touch me today. Move in our lives. Move in this place. Give us clean hands and hearts.
Wash us clean. Every part. Precious Lamb. At the foot of the cross. Show me your love through the judgment you receive, and you've won my heart. Yes, you've won my heart. Now I can trade these ashes in for. praying that you've done that this morning, that these things are at the foot of the cross today, that your heart is right, prepared, ready to receive. I'd ask you to go ahead and be seated. You can be assured of this one thing. The Word of God is true. It's true. It's true that Jesus died for your sins. It's true that he rose from the dead. It's true you can be saved by the grace of God. And it's true that when Jesus gathered with his disciples that evening and said, this represents certain things, it's true. This juice is fresh grape juice. It's called in Scripture the blood of the grape. Not fermented, because Jesus' blood wasn't spoiled. Pure blood, not tainted nor spoiled by sin whatsoever. That's why we don't use wine like some churches do, because it just doesn't fit the biblical model. All right? There's no spoilage here. Jesus was without sin. This bread does represent his body. It's pierced. It's scarred. The marks created by the, the baking of it, preparation where it's pierced and there's holes that are in this. It's unleavened bread. It represents several things. It represents the suffering of our Savior cooked in the oven of God's judgment pierced for our sorrows and our sins without leaven, without sin. So let's just have a humble heart and keep our minds set upon the Lord and all he's done for us. He said the night that Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. These gentlemen are going to take this bread and pass it out amongst you and I'm going to ask that as we do this today that you just take the bread and think about all the Lord's done and all the Lord's given to you as we pass it and then hold it and we'll receive it together. Gentlemen, would you disperse that amongst us? Tell me how much 
Jesus took the bread from the table, and the Bible says that he broke it. He said, this is my body. He knew exactly what he was getting ready to face. He knew exactly the brokenness that he was going to experience. When he took that bread and that Passover meal bread and everything we've said about it from being pierced to baked the way it had to be baked in the ovens to be marked, he knew exactly what that would mean for his body. We need to remember that, that he did suffer for us. So let's give thanks to the Lord. And I would ask you, as you just bow your head before the Lord right there, then your own words and your own expression of love to the Father for the gift of his Son, tell him that. And then tell the Lord himself, thank you, Jesus, for your body. Just a moment of worship between you and him. Take that moment. Father, we know that you're an omnipresent and yet omniscient God, that you know the thoughts in our hearts right this moment. My prayer is that all you can see is the expression of our gratitude and our worship and our love to you. As we take this, Lord Jesus, and we do it in remembrance of you, we give you thanks and we give you glory for the sacrifice of your body for us. It's in your name we pray, in the name of Jesus. Would you take and eat? Jesus commanded such authority. Did he not? He spoke with such power. He spoke with such grace. I mean, the wind would shut up. The waves would settle. He said, in like manner, and his voice speaks, this cup is the cup of the new covenant. I've made a way for you. There's a commitment being made on your behalf, and it requires a sacrifice of spotless blood. This cup is the cup of the new covenant, my blood. We'll ask you to do the same as we pass this out amongst you to hold on and we'll receive it as a body together. No other fount. There's no other way for you to find salvation. There's no other way for you to find real peace in life. There's no other way to enjoy the life that God has for you than what this cup represents. There's no hope whatsoever. The Bible says 
without the shedding of blood, there's no removal, no remission of our sins. So I ask you to do as we did a while ago, just to bow your head with me and thank the Lord in this moment for the precious blood of the Lamb and what it's meant to your life, what it means to your life, the sacrifice of Jesus' blood. Just take a moment, tell him you love him, worship him. Lord Jesus, we can try to imagine and through art, music, and movies that moment when you hung on the cross and declared it is paid for, it's finished. But Lord, it's not even humanly possible for us to know the real pain, the agony the horrific battle you had to fight on the cross for us. The demonic moves against you, the physical abuses against you, the emotional struggles, the physical pains of that moment in time. The Lord, we remember you did that for us. And remember that what you gave to us cost a great price. Father, we thank you for offering your son at the cross for us. Jesus, we thank you for doing that for us. Holy Spirit, we thank you for bringing us to it. We love you. What we do here today in drinking of this cup is to remember the new covenant and ultimately, Jesus, to remember you. We give you thanks. Would you trick and drink this in remembrance of Jesus? Let's sing nothing but the blood again, can we? <laughs> Let's stand and sing it together. to give the Lord a praise offering this Amen. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He is worthy. You may be seated. I pray you leave this service today with a fresh realization again of how much God loves you, how much Jesus has done for us, and not only that, that he provides the life, the power, and the victory you need today to live for him. Amen. Somebody say it a little louder. Amen. Brother Gary. Amen. The ladies' Bible study does start September 3rd at 10 o'clock here in our fellowship hall at our church at Magnolia. It's at Magnolia's on, on starts on 9 4 at 10 o'clock. The cost is $17 now. I say $17. <laughs> Amazon has a monopoly on shipping, right? And with Lifeway kind of closing down and, and their, their storefronts closing down, the price for delivery went up. So 17 is the suggested, but it costs a little more to ship here. So throw a couple more bucks in there, right, just to pay for the, the shipping and things like that. So, you know, just wanted to give the heads up on that. Child care is available, but be, be sure to contact the church for that. Um, a WANA registration does start today. It is going to be, uh, there's going to be sign up in the fellowship hall right after church. So if you're interested in Awanas, just make your way straight to the fellowship hall and you can sign up for that. That starts September 8th. Wednesday night services, we've had a couple, a couple of uh, weeks off because of our marriage conferences. 
but we are back in business. Uh, this will be our last Wednesday in the fellowship hall with our summer sermon series. And so this Wednesday we will continue on the uh, study of Romans. Leadership dinner is September 6th, 7 o'clock here at the Spring Campus Child Care for ages 5 and under. Call to register for child care. Now, for those leaders, we are going with the assumption that you're going to be here. Amen. So you need to let us know if you're not going to be here because we're planning for food. We're going to order food, things like that. So only let us know if you are not going to be here. We don't know if you're going to be here because, we, are, like I said, we're already going with the assumption that you are going to be here. National Back to Church uh, Sunday is September 15th. Be sure to use the welcome, the invite cards that are at your seat, chairs to invite people to church, invite people to church, and invite people to the church. Amen. Um, in addition, uh, with that, uh, if you're a guest of ours, you received that, well, uh, you should have filled out that welcome card. At the end of the service, our pastor would love the opportunity to meet you, greet you, put a free gift in your hand. Do not forget your tithes and offerings. Summer's over. Everybody's back at school or work, and vacation should be over for the most part. Uh, be sure to honor the Lord and bless the Lord as, 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 as the Lord has blessed you, and, and be sure to give of your, your uh, 10%, so don't forget your tithes and offerings. There's three ways to give online here at our offering receptacles. We don't pass a plate, or you can always mail it in. Amen. At this time, I would ask that Eric and Tammy come up here to the front. I would have pictures, but any picture of Eric is inappropriate, so <laughs> that's right. So, got some bad news for y'all. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Eric and, and Tammy reached out to me, and after 29 years, right, 29 years, uh, they've decided to step away from Awanas. Uh, they feel God is leading them in a different direction. They're not leaving the church. Uh, they're just going to be in a different ministry, so pray for them. But I wanted to bring them forward just to say thank you, um, having worked with you while Eric was, was overseas and, and having worked under you as, as a teacher in Awanas. I tell you what, you guys are a blessing to me and to my family. Both my boys went to Awanas, and, and they just keep on talking about the stories that, that Eric shares. And, and, and just working with you when, when Eric was gone was such a blessing, how meticulous you are and everything that you do. So just thank you from the bottom of my heart to you. But church, I would like this to be an opportunity for us to come forward and just thank them for everything that they've done uh, in, in, with Believers Fellowship. And I'm sure they have impacted your children and your lives as much as they have mine. So thank you so much for all that you do. Love you guys. All right. With that being said, you are dismissed. All right. All right don't let me be the only one. Y'all come on up. Happy. Where are we going to lunch? We're all invited. <laughs>